All right, so we've almost made it to the end of our list. We're on number nine now. And number nine for our list is to actually start reading. We talked about learning to read, and now we're going to actually read. Uh, normally, I recommend to start out in a book called Drum Aerobics. Uh, just fair uh, disclaimer, we're not sponsored or anything like that. Not even close to anything like that. And uh, the, the the aerobic series from Hal Leonard does have its ups and downs. I really like them overall, but they're really weird as far as balancing goes. Um, their ukulele books are really uh, pretty easy to understand and start out with and, and progress through. But, for example, like their piano aerobics book is really hard, and they claim, oh, beginners to adults. It's not for beginners at all. Um, the drum book is kind of a mixed bag. It's it's pretty easy for the first few units and then it gets really hard. So if you get this, don't think it's something you'll knock out in, you know, a few weeks or maybe even a few years. Um, the formatting is, is set up to where it's intended to have seven exercises a week and that you do them in real time. But generally I tell people just take the time it takes to, to get through it effectively. Don't just keep tr you know trudging through it and, and having a worse and worse time. So take whatever time it takes to get through it. So what we're going to do is look at week one in drum aerobics. Um, you can all include a link to the book on Amazon. And luckily on Amazon they actually give you a preview of the first week. So if you're apprehensive about buying a book, you can look at all the exercise like all the exercises we're playing through, and you can actually, uh, you know, play along, read along, and we'll be looking at these together. So let's take it to the drum set. All right, so now that we're at the drum set, it'll take a little bit of time to go through all these, but we're gonna look through all the exercises in week one of drum aerobics from Hal Leonard. Uh, this, this particular series is is authored by Aaron D. Zyker, and uh, again, I, I recommend the book for a pretty long-term challenge, but the first three, well, first two for sure, by the third one it starts to get pretty hard for, for beginners, but um, if it's something you want to keep to expand your vocabulary for weeks and weeks and possibly even years, it's a really, it's a really great book. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk through each one of these if you want to read along on, on the free preview on Amazon or order yourself a copy, uh, go ahead and pull that up. So, our first exercise is very similar to the warm-up we already did. Uh, the only difference is rather than playing one, two, three, four on the bass drum, they're going to have us use our hi-hat for our two and our four. So we're basically going to walk. We're going to go right foot, 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 foot. Good. All right, so from there, now we're going to have our hands play our warm-up. Uh, from quarter notes up to sixteenth notes, but we really do need to alternate this time. This is all about practicing limb independence, getting each limb to do different things without getting confused. Okay? So our, our hands are going to go and then from there, I usually have my students make sure they can loop it. If you take a look in the book, there's a repeat sign there, so we want to make sure that you can repeat that cleanly. So let's try two of those in a row real quick, just to see what it looks like and sounds like, right? One, two, three, four. Go ahead and take a look at Tuesday. So for Tuesday, we're going to take our first time pattern we learned, and we're going to learn some variations of it. Okay. So the first one's just that. So I'm actually going to skip over that because you've heard that and we've already worked on that. But the second one, if you look at it, on the third beat, rather than having one bass drum, it has two. It has one on three and on the end of three. Three and. So instead of going. So with these, usually I have the students make sure they can loop it at least four times. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And if possible, even add our crashes to bring us in and bring us out. So we'll go. All right. 
So let's look at our next one. Now we have two bass drums on one and three. So it goes one, two, and three. All right, so let's try that. One, two, three. the trickiest one yet. We have a kick on one, we have a kick on the and of two, a kick on three, and a kick on the and of four. So overall we have to go one and two and three and four. This one can be especially tricky to loop the first time or you can get mixed up between your and your snare. Overall we need to go one and two and three and four. This is where counting is really really important. If you just guess on this, you can practice the wrong thing accidentally really easily. So you want to make sure you're counting and thinking one and two and three and four and one. And if it's too hard, treat it like our very first time pattern. Do each pattern individually first. Try going one and two and three and four and four. Now these are the same, so it's not really a big deal, but try the different combinations. and try playing four bars. All right, so that's Tuesday. Let's look at Wednesday. All right, so if you peek ahead to the second exercise on Wednesday, that's our exercise we did when we were practicing fills. We went. Yeah. So let's look at the one before that. It's the same idea, but they just play one note on each drum. They go one, two, three, four. So let's try this like we did before. Usually I have my students do two loops of this, just like we practiced our fills before. So going time for three bars, fill for one, and then time for three bars, fill for one. We'll try that with each of these fills here. So our first one goes one, two, three, four. So here it is in context, right? Two, three, So now we're going to go Now if this one's too hard to do fast at first, it's okay to slow it down, but you have to slow down your time pattern too. Maybe you go one and two, and so you can go The thing we want to look out for though is don't go So let's, let's hear this one. one.
challenging. We mix all of our rhythms. It has a quarter note, it has 16th notes, it has eighth notes, and then 16th notes again. And make sure you're paying attention to your stickings for them. They're there to help you, not to make it harder. They want you to go is there's still eighth notes in the bass drum. So we have to make sure that we don't accidentally play twice on the hi-hat when our bass drum plays twice. Usually, it's kind of hard at first to get your body to do more complex patterns in your legs than it is in your hands, because you know we do more dexterous things with our hands than our feet most of the time. So for this first one, we want to make sure we're going one, two, three, and four. Now, a lot of times on accident, people either go one, Play the hi-hat twice, or they'll go one, two, three, and, and they won't play it at all. So it's just making sure you play it one time while your leg plays twice. Let's try a set of four of those. One, two, three, four. So you can always do like the other ones and do each part individually and then try to put them together or take it really slow. Okay, our next one we have double kicks <clears throat> on one and three. So one, two, and three. Let's check that out. One. tricky because the, the bass drum doesn't even play with the hi-hat at all in the middle of this. Overall we go one, two, and three, and four. So one, two, and three, and four. Okay? So this one is tricky when you're first starting out. Um, I remember it took me a while to, to learn to play this the first time I ever played it. It was, it was frustrating at first. So uh, let's give that a shot. So counting out, we're going to go one, two, and three, and four. Let's hear it in time. Ready? One, two, three, three, three. really tricky too because there's no kick on one. We're so used at this point to going one, two, three, four, but this one actually goes one, two, three, four. So for right now, let's actually leave out our crash at the beginning because that'll be even more confusing. And we usually want our crash with our kick. It sounds kind of, kind of, kind of bad if we go. It tends to sound like a mistake. So let's just leave the crash out for this one and treat this as its own special exercise. So. So Friday, if you look, it has two notes at the same time. One is our snare drum, one is our 
floor tom. So they want you to play those in eighth notes, like But they also have a new notation at the bottom. They have a crescendo. So that's telling, telling us we want us to get louder as we go on. Now the thing is, playing louder is not about hitting harder. It's about the stick moving faster. So it's all about the velocity of the stick. So if we're playing at the same rate, like eighth notes, one, two, three, four, if our stick moves a smaller amount, it's going to be a quieter sound. If it moves a bigger amount, A lot of my new, new drummers always go So we don't want to do that, we just want to go nice and steady and get bigger over time. Another thing is people get big too fast. They'll go and then they have nowhere to go. So make sure it's gradual over time. Let's try treating this like a fill. So we'll play three bars time. Three bars time, then uh, that is a fill, and then we'll do that one more time across the whole uh, the, that whole loop. There's two things that are different, and I try to get my students to pick this out just by looking at it before I tell them. So the first thing is, if you look at the top, our symbol isn't above the line like it normally is. Normally, if it's above the line, that means hi-hat, but this one is on the line, so that means it's our ride symbol, okay? Our next thing that's different is if you look at the bottom, there's an X at the bottom. And usually, I try to get my students to think about this. Our things at the bottom are low things or things that we play with our feet, like our bass drum. So I tell them, how do you think you could play a cymbal with your foot? Oh, well we have our hi-hat, right? So what we're gonna do is play our time patterns we did before, but with two changes. We're gonna move to the ride cymbal. And we're also going to add the hi-hat pedal on two and four. So we're gonna make a little chick along with our snare. We'll go one and so here's what the first one looks like. Let's do a set of four. Two, three, four. All right. And if this is getting comfortable too, again, it'd be nice to add a crash to start and to finish. And if you have more than one crash, it'd be really convenient if you had one next to your ride symbol. tricky quickly playing things that make you cross across the drum set. So if it's too hard at first, feel free to add that in later, okay? Let's look at our second one. I'm going to go ahead and add my crashes in this time. on one and three. Because 
we haven't talked about too many things like this at all. So I would treat this as a fill to start out with, and it has triplets, which we haven't done yet. It has three notes per beat. So we're gonna figure out a new way to count this. We'll get way more into detail with this later um, in, a, in a different series, but rather than going one and two and, we're gonna count these one la li, one la li for three notes. And they want us to pass that triplet between our hands on the snare drum going right, left to our foot on the bass drum. They want you to go It's a little bit hard to make this smooth at first because it's, it's tricky passing a rhythm between your hands and your feet. So we're going to aim to go okay. Now, we haven't really figured out a time pattern that works with this yet. Uh, but it's just a good exercise on its own, and later on we'll figure out how to integrate that with some other stuff in a future series. So we just want to think of that as a special challenge for right now. So that's week one of drum aerobics by Andy Zyker from Hal Leonard. And uh, if there's any interest for it, I'll do a play along track on bass for this one, just like we did for some of our simpler exercises. This one is just a way bigger project. So, uh, if you're interested in, in getting a play-along track on bass, just please leave comments down below, and we'll see what we can do about that.